давай. Fyodor Dostoevsky's final novel, The Brothers Karamazov, has enjoyed a far-reaching influence over the past couple hundred years. Among its readers are famous intellectuals and also sad college students cramming over spring break. A dedicated team of researchers bravely went out into the field to closely explore the impact of this brilliant novel and its highly dramatic characters. We begin our presentation of their findings with a fully professional reenactment of one of the many tense scenes in the story. On the newspaper page And love and tradition Of the grand design Some people say It's even harder to find Well then there must be Some magic clue Inside these gentle walls Cause all I see Is a tower of dreams Real love bursting out of every scene Be so generous as to forgive me The servant told me it was at one I'm so sorry I'm late don't upset yourself. It's of no consequence. You're only a little bit late. <sighs> As I was saying, because there is no natural law that states that man must love man, that instead comes from this idea of the immortality. And thus, man does not love man. Allow me. If I understood correctly, you're saying that everything is allowed without God? I'll remember. Is that really your conviction as to the consequences of the disappearance of faith and immortality? Yes, it was my contention. There is no virtue if there is no immortality. You are blessed in believing that, or else most unhappy. Why unhappy? Because in all probability, you yourself don't believe in the immortality of your soul, nor in what you have written in your article on church jurisdiction. Maybe you're right, but still, I wasn't quite joking either. You were not altogether joking, that's true. The question is still bothering your heart. It is still unanswered, but the martyr sometimes likes to divert himself while the despair, as if driven to it by despair itself. Meanwhile, in your despair, you too divert yourself with magazine articles and discussions in society, though you don't believe your own arguments. And with an aching heart, mock at them inwardly. That question you have not answered. And this is your great grief, for it clamors for an answer. But can it be resolved in myself? Resolved in a positive way? If it can't be decided in the affirmative, it will never be decided in the negative. You know that it is the peculiarity of your heart, and all its suffering is due to it. But thank the Creator who has given you a heart capable of such suffering, of thinking and seeking higher things, for our dwellings in the heavens, God grant that your heart will attain the answer on earth, and may God bless your path. Didn't see you there. I'm Frederick Nietzsche, self-described Antichrist and Dionysian. So, Nietzsche, how would you describe how the Brothers Karamazov influenced your writing? Well, I believe Ivan and his strife with Christianity is right up my alley in regards to my hit novel on the genealogy of morals. Take, for instance, the Grand Inquisitor. He directly argues the fact that Christianity is the root of the Rosentiment, something that I believe as well, which also led to the rise of slave morality in society. You thirsted for love that is free, and not for the servile raptures of a slave before a power that has left him permanently terrified. But here too you overestimated mankind, for of course they are slaves, though they were created rebels. Interesting. So you see this related to your work in what way? Well, I see that Jesus is necessarily a puppet, 
a puppet to the priest who geniusly used his death as bait. Take, for instance, what I wrote in the Genealogy of Morals, that anything to equal the enticing, intoxicating, overwhelming, and undermining power of the symbol of the Holy Cross, that ghastly paradox of a god on the cross, that mystery of an unimaginable, ultimate cruelty and self-crucifixion of God for the salvation of man. Um, like the Grand Inquisitor, Jesus is used as a means to a greater end, that being slave morality, which has dominated the minds of humankind since the death of Jesus. They have used mystery, spirituality, as a way to build a triumphant crown for the priests, thus taking the devil's offer. This has led Jesus to becoming a threat to the Grand Inquisitor, which I found to be fascinating. What are your thoughts on Dostoevsky? Dostoevsky is quite an interesting guy. And I absolutely adore all of his works. Most importantly, Brothers Karamazov. Uh, the book really allows me to look into the personality of Dostoevsky and give him a really good psychoanalyzing. Uh, and his personality is fairly complex and he does put his own character and personality into Brothers K. How would you analyze Dostoevsky's personality? Well, Dostoevsky's characters in his novels allow us to see his personality in four distinct facets. The first one is fairly obvious and that is the creative artist. Uh, to me, Brothers Karamazov is the greatest work of literature in the whole wide world and scenes like The Great Inquisitor are just among the peaks of literature uh, and I believe it's really clear to see how Dostoevsky is a creative artist. Uh, and with that being the most obvious, the other three personality facets are a little bit hard to decipher, but uh, for instance, the second one is moralist. Good old uh, Fyodor uh, is a pinnacle of morality, but that's because he was a sinner first, and that is his third trait, which I will get into later. Um, he's able to reach this high point of morality because he traveled through the depths of sin in order to achieve it. Um, but Dostoevsky is pretty wasteful with his morality. Um, he has this, he doesn't have any glorious moral striving, instead submitting to temporal and spiritual authority in the Tsar and Christian God. And he always carries a very high element of nationalism which I find to be very fruitless. People with far worse minds and far, with far less effort have been able to complete the same amount of nationalism that he has had. He could have been a liberator and a teacher of humanity, but instead settled for just being a warden of the prison that is humanity. This failure is part of his fourth trait, which is neurosis. But as I mentioned before, Dostoevsky is a sinner. Uh, I believe that sinners are criminals, and criminals have two traits in common with each other, um, which is boundless egoism and a strong destructive urge. Uh, people have a tendency to call out a sort of unconditional love that comes from his novels. Um, however, he, he puts this destructive character that I mentioned before into his novels with his characters, such as murdering and gambling. Um, and those traits are all too common in Dostoevsky's characters. Um, he has this sadistic quality that makes him treat his readers with intolerance and torment. And I'm not just talking about making them read an 800 page book. Uh, and then finally, uh, neurosis. It's a common fact that Dostoevsky had epilepsy and this symptom is just a symptom of his hystero epilepsy that he has. Um, and I believe that the death of his father was the turning point for him uh, and really shows that how important the death of the father was in the brothers Karamazov. How would you say Dostoevsky influenced you? Being a huge fan of Dostoevsky's work allows me to put my theories to test. For instance, think about my idea of the Oedipus complex. Dostoevsky's hatred for his father culminated in, 
culminated in him committing parricide in Brothers Karamazov, which is the act of killing one's father. Uh, this is a prime example of one of my theories at play in his works, and it really allows me to see Dostoevsky's life in his novels and be able to psychoanalyze him properly. Um, and in fact, I was actually persuaded to write a piece to accompany his work. Um, it, and it allowed me to really dig deep into uh, Brothers Karamazov and to see what Dostoevsky was actually like without even be meeting him. The genesis for much of my philosophy was Ivan Karamazov. Ivan's rebellion, though he denied that label, was to stand against the abstract and inhuman authority of the world's disorder with a really combative atheistic spirit. I wrote once that the absurd does not liberate it binds, it does not authorize all actions. Ivan's statement that everything is permitted does not mean that nothing is forbidden. And Ivan Karamazov's line is the perfect expression of a coherent freedom. And in my book, The Rebel, I also explored Ivan's theories as one of the most trenchant expressions of revolt, the only possible stance that may be adopted by the individual confronted by the chaos of the world is revolt. It is a defiant attitude towards the authority of God rather than a denial of his existence. In The Plague, I also explored Ivan's belief that mankind suffers from a perverse violation of man's innocence particularly that of children, which Ivan was very concerned with. I don't necessarily think that atheism is the conclusion to man's existential predicament. Ivan doesn't deny his existence. He simply argues that if he does exist, then the way in which he's devised the world order needs challenging. He says to Alyosha, it is not God I do not accept. I merely most respectfully return him the ticket. Dostoevsky to be my blood relative, so of course I have been influenced by him. We have many similarities, you know. He had epilepsy, I have tuberculosis. <coughs> Can't even cut that. I also really hate my father. In The Judgment, my protagonist is almost eager to carry out the death sentence of his father. Yes, anyway, I have many of his novels in my library, and of course I have read The Brilliant Karamazov, another story of parricide. The problem of guilt set out by this novel interests me greatly, that all men are responsible for all others, and that our, all are guilty before each other. Guilt drives my characters very often, but unlike in Dostoevsky's novels, my characters have no hope of escape from this guilt. You know, in Slaughterhouse-Five, I wrote, everything there is to know about life that you need to know is in the Brothers Karamazov. But that isn't enough anymore. You see, Brothers Karamazov was actually the first book that I read after World War II. I fought in World War II. I was a prisoner at Dresden. Uh, and Brothers Karamazov was the first book that I read after that. I was reading on a honeymoon with my first life, with my first wife, who was a big fan of the book. Just as Dostoevsky looked with trepidation and wonder at the 20th century, so too do I look at the 21st century. Uh, you can see elements of the Grand Inquisitor in many of my various works. Uh, I use the character of Winston Niles Rumford in Sirens of Titan. And in Player Piano, there's this sort of uh, line that you can trace back through Brave New World, which itself was based on Zamutin's We, which itself was very influenced by the figure of the Grand Inquisitor in Dostoevsky. You could say that Dostoevsky was a believer who could feel in the depths of his being the despair of the atheist, while I am more of a despairing atheist who feels in the depths of his soul the life-saving faith of a believer. Oh, previous.
How does Dostoevsky come up in your works? In my films, I try to go to Dostoevsky's spiritual and religious realm. I tried in my movies to render the attainment of faith through suffering and through sacrifice. Many people compared the stalker character in your film, Stalker, to that of Alyosha in Brothers Karamazov. Where do you see these similarities? That's true. You can see a lot of similarities, and for sure, uh, Alyosha's, uh, my interpretation of Alyosha and Brothers Karamazov has certainly influenced my, uh, the way Stalker uh, turned out. And you could see both characters sort of uh, spiritual, meek, asexual to some extent. The both, like the two of them, are childlike seekers of faith and goodness. И небо скрылось, свившись как свиток, и всякая гора и остров двинулись с мест своих. И цари земные, и вельможи, и богатые, и тысяченачальники, и сильные, и всякие свободные. Скрылись в пещеры и в ущелье гор, и говорят горам и камням, падите на нас, и скройте нас от лица сидящего на престоле и от гнева Агнца, ибо пришел великий день гнева его, и кто сможет устоять? Was there any other element in Brothers Karamazov that had influence on your work? Oh, you can see also some uh, similarities uh, with uh, Ivan from Brothers Karamazov and the writer in my movie Stalker as well. Ivan is a man of pure reason and he was condemned for that greatly because of his lack of faith. And in Stalker you can see that the writer equally is condemned for his lack of faith as well. Dostoevsky works on the basis that the novelist is able to show in some degree what the divine creation might be like. God is neither an explanation of anything nor a fact about the world. The difference between a conscious believer and a real deliberate atheist is not about adding or subtracting one thing from the existent reality of the world. It is a conflict between the policies and the possibilities of human life, between someone who, who accepts the dependence of everything on the divine gratuity and attempts to respond with some image of that gratuity, and someone who denies that dependence and is faced with the unanswerable question of why one's policy should be preferable to another. I'm not trying to say that he is halfway to the atheism. I am just saying that he is at that position that atheists don't usually attack. Hi, we're, uh, we're Yvonne and Alyosha, we're a Seattle-based pop rock indie, uh, sort of faith-based, but not really like a Christian rock group. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we took our name, uh, Yvonne and Alyosha, from the Grand Inquisitor CD line and Alyosha are actually our names. Um, and like, yeah, you know, we just, uh, a lot of our songs deal with these questions of like faith, you know, and uh, whether or not you believe in God. So I just think it has a lot to do with like Brothers Karamazov. I haven't read the book, but um, you know, it just has a lot to do with that sort of those questions that are important to us.